Welcome everybody to my review of the EVT1 e-bike and I'm not a professional when it comes to bikes but I'll do my best to share my honest thoughts and experiences with you. So let's dive in and see what this bike has to offer. Assembling the bike was straightforward and mostly hassle free. The only issue was that the quick release was missing a spring. It should have two but it just came with one. I installed it anyway and it didn't seem to affect the bike's performance. The real challenge was installing the rear rack, which required removing and reattaching the rear wheel. The instructions on the paper weren't really clear, but fortunately Evie's online video was much more informative. It's worth noting that both the rear and front rack are part of the Urban Warrior bundle, which is an extra cost. Normally around 200 euros, but currently it's discounted to 150 euros. The EVT1 is a stylish modern bike with a dreamy blue color and sleek black accents. It has a clean premium look with no visible welding marks. However, the pink quick release lever stands out and disrupts the overall design. I think personally a black or blue color would have been a better choice so it matches nicely together with the bike design. The frame is sturdy and includes a screen integrated into the handlebars that display battery life, speed, lights, pedal assist settings and trip details which remains clear even in bright sunlight. The bike comes with an electronic lock that can be operated via an app or with one of the two included NFC cards. It would be more convenient if you could also unlock it using your phone's NFC feature. Especially if the app is malfunctioning, which actually happened for me. And I'll come back to that later in this video. The battery is built into the frame, providing a sleek design and has a range of about 70 kilometers on level 3 pedal assist settings. Though this decreases of course if you put it on higher settings. While the battery can be removed for replacement, it's not designed for any easy removal. The included adapter is long enough to conveniently charge the bike, taking only 3 hours to fully charge from empty. The T1 features aluminium mudguards on the front and on the back and integrated lighting. Both lights on the front and the back are pretty bright, but the front one, damn, this is like a whole nother level. <laughs> At this price point, a belt drive would have been a better choice than the chain it currently uses, as it would last longer and require much less maintenance. The chain isn't well covered, which might get your pants a bit dirty. The bike is equipped with a 9-speed Shimano gear shifter, which absolutely works as a charm. Uh, the bike's rear axle houses a 250-watt motor, giving it a top speed of 25 km per hour, so you can use it in Europe as well. Uh, and it also includes hydraulic brakes for effective stopping power, although the front brakes tend to squeak a bit. Weighing 22.9 kilograms, the T1 is on the lighter side for e-bikes and it sports impressively thick tires. Oh my god. As it is an e-bike, the EVT1 is also a smart bike, so you also get an additional app together with the bike, which offers more features. So it offers like things like keyless unlocking and remote monitoring of your battery life for free. However, if you want additional features like GPS tracking, theft detection, phone alerts, trip history and bike sharing, there is a 5 euro per month EV Secure subscription. While it is disappointing that these features require subscription, I guess it just helps cover the expenses of maintaining that 4G LTE connectivity for the services. So it is kind of understandable, but just a bummer. Connecting to the bike via the app initially worked perfectly fine, but I ran into issues trying to connect it for a second time with my Google Pixel. After contacting Evie, it uh, seems to be a specific issue with the Google Pixel phones only, and they're looking into for a fix. Fortunately, the app worked without any problems on my girlfriend's iPhone. And now of course the most important part, Driving comfort. Overall, the EVT1 drives comfortably, but there are definitely some improvements that I'd like to see. The handles are comfortable to grip, and thick tires provide effective dampening over small bumps. However, for more significant bumps, a dedicated suspension system would absolutely enhance the comfort, as right now it is a bit rough. The saddle offers a fair amount of cushioning, though it tends to feel a bit firm after extended use. A bit more flexibility in a saddle sag would be welcome. Uh, additionally, a customizable steering positioning would also improve comfort, as right now the current setup causes me to slightly lean forward. T1 packs a punch in terms of power delivery and is able to accelerate rapidly. 
Unfortunately, in the Netherlands, the biggest slope is a bridge nearby, which it seemed to be handling without any problems, but any serious hills, yeah. Sorry guys, <laughs> I just can't test it there. But don't hesitate to embark on longer journeys, even though the bike might not achieve its full range. Since the T1 is relatively light, uh, turning off pedal assistance still allows for a comfortable ride that doesn't require that much effort. The braking is generally adequate, although the front brakes might emit a slight squeak as mentioned before. Biking without any pedal assistance offers a pleasantly quiet ride. However, activating the pedal assistance introduces some scratchy friction noises from the motor, which can be somewhat annoying. The best feature of all is the torque sensor in the pedals, which just the motor based on how you pedal. This makes it easy to ride slowly next to someone walking, or to maintain a steady pace without any expected speed changes. I have had some bikes in the past which just continuously boosted and stopped and boosted and was just an annoying feeling. This bike thankfully doesn't have it. Okay, conclusion time. Overall, while some people may like this bike, its price of 2000 euros, which is reduced from 2500 euros, doesn't really make it stand out compared to other bikes with similar performance. In the Netherlands, where like a wide variety of e-bikes are already readily available, you can find models with additional features like belt drive, front suspension, rear racks already included, and adjustable stairs, and removable batteries, often for the same price already, or even less. I mean, what sets this bike apart is basically just its design and its integrated smart lock and GPS tracking. However, features like GPS tracking come an additional cost, which might just not justify the overall expense. And that's it. I uh, hope you guys found this video helpful. Of course, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And we'll check you guys out in the next one. Goodbye.